So let me introduce myself. I'm Alex Corletz. I'm the solutions engineer here at Starwind. And I wanted to uh, thank you for participating in today's webinar. I believe we all will have an informative and positive conversation on, I think, important topic, at least for last year. Um, so it is called Live after VMware virtualization with Proxmox. Today's agenda will be next. So we will define challenges of the virtualization world and we'll check what actually happened around the VMware. Uh, then we'll see what are the alternatives on the market and we'll talk about uh, Proxmox, which is kind of our main topic here. And we'll also highlight how Starwind can use and approve Proxmox for providing HE for your production environments. And in the end, so I'll show you how Starwind actually on the Proxmox looks like. Hopefully. So, and as always, Q&A session after that. So uh, let's go then uh, with the webinar. And first, I want to talk a bit about some challenges that um, you might experience uh, when working or creating uh, with uh, creating the production environments, production infrastructures, actually everything basically in the rapidly evolving landscape of some technologies and services. Uh, individuals and organizations are frequently faced with um, the the daunting task of choosing the most suitable solutions uh, to meet their unique needs. So this decision-making process is often complex and multifaceted, um, involving careful consideration of various factors such as cost, functionality, scalability, and also compatibility with existing systems, uh, especially if we're talking about the server and virtualization world. And uh, from from my point of view, there are kind of two major challenges out there. So the first one is uh, selecting the right solution for you. So um, it requires deep understanding of one's current and future needs. So it involves evaluating the market, comparing different offerings, and considering the trade-offs between the benefits and limitations of each option, actually. And so the challenge lies uh, not only in identifying a solution that addresses the immediate uh, requirements, but also uh, one that can adapt to changing the, demand, the demands over time. And uh, the second challenge is simply switching from existing solution to a new one for various reasons. So. Um, Transitioning to a new solution can be uh, driven by several factors, including the need for improved performance, access to better features, or more favorable pricing. So, however, uh, the switch often comes with its own set of challenges, such as data migration, uh, like user retaining potential or temporary disruptions in services, and um, a successful transition requires careful careful planning, clear communication, well thought out implementation, and uh, like well 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 thought out implementation strategy in general, just to minimize any negative impact on operations. But yeah, so enough of those broad statements. Let's get to the point why we are here. So, the inverse acquisition by Broadcom. Well, like typically one one company acquires another, there are some changes to be performed by one who's the boss now. And the good changes or bad changes only history will know. But so we're living here in present time. So let's see uh, what kind of changes are already implemented and uh, what actually appeared in the news feeds and forums, uh, what actually happened in here. First of all, uh, when we're talking about VMware's acquisition by Broadcom, uh, there are some licensing model changes. So uh, the shift from perpetual licensing as an option to a forced 
subscription based only model. So a lot of customers, a lot of VMware customers were using long-term licensing and were not paying attention to expiration date because there was no. And uh, the new subscription model is considerably more expensive, which could be unsustainable for many smaller companies. And also certain VMware offerings that small and medium businesses relied on are being discontinued, which means that uh, these businesses will need to find an alternative solution or pay significantly more than they paid in the past. Also, there is increased costs. So there have been instances where businesses were quoted prices that were literally more than 10 times higher than before. So with the expiration of subscription licenses, businesses are facing uh, increased costs with without the option of updates or support from VMware leading to potential security risks. And there is also strategic focus shift. So Broadcom is part, uh, pivoting its focus towards um, enterprise business. And instead of having dozens of different editions for different businesses, for different purposes, uh, they are now shifting uh, to just a couple of licensing options, which are including most of the enterprise features. So uh, small and medium business, which do not need these features, will need to simply pay for these features anyway. Um, okay, but let's, let's face the fact. So actually VMware is okay. So nothing um, happens, at least for now, with its functionality. So it's okay. And they are okay for a reason. Um, so they are leaders on the market. Uh, they provide a lot of great features and they are very stable. Um, so it's proven to be a good solution over a decade. However, uh, kind of talking into account current situation, it will obviously hit your wallet. And so, so you need to choose wisely. So there's nothing wrong to stay with VMware and pay more. Uh, but based on what we said before, a lot of people that are VMware customers for a long time, uh, they are now at least looking for alternatives. And um, yeah, so obviously there are going to be some limitations in other solutions. They may be not as robust as VMware. And there are a lot of things you need to pay attention to uh, in your integrations with VMware. Okay. So, right, since we covered uh, what was the VMware's drama is all about, uh, we're getting close to the topic of today's webinar, the Proxmox. But before, let's talk a bit about other VMware alternatives on the market. So what we can, what, what we can use. So what can be considered as an alternative then? Uh, Microsoft Hyper-V. Yeah, that's an option. And um, so the second player on the market, a lot of businesses implement Microsoft Hyper-V in production. However, historically speaking, many of VMware users don't trust in Microsoft uh, products for various reasons, even if they can use Windows Server in their production environments, but uh, they might not see uh, Hyper-V as an alternative to VMware in general. Um, However, it's worth to mention that Hyper-V is good for small and medium businesses, especially if, if uh, you're already running some Windows Server virtual machines in your production environment. So switching to Hyper-V might be technically correct and cost-effective solution for you if you're not requiring a lot of extra features that VMware has, such as, for example, the full tolerance functionality, um, et cetera. Um, just by the way, a uh, little off topic. So I see you guys um, asking me that, uh, uh, can you have the copy of the webinar? Of course uh, you can. So uh, just uh, this, this webinar will be recorded and uh, it will be available in one, two weeks um, after, after this date. Um, and all participants will have the link to this webinar on the email that was used for participating in the webinar. So answering all these questions, yes. So you will receive a copy of the meeting. Thanks. Um, right, okay. Um, so another option is XPNG or Zen server. Um, so that's pretty much the same. So that could be an option as well, especially taking into account XPNG is an open source product and it is also free. So yeah, there are a lot of features missing in there and 
in general, XCPNG is quite an old technology utilizing old Linux core, but uh, there were also commercial offerings like Citrix Zen server. And I'd confirm that it's a viable alternative for small, let's say, two node or three node clusters. Um, it is not bad at all. Uh, you just need to keep in mind that the support and documentation are pretty limited with uh, XCPNG and Zen servers. And the same I can say about the Red Hat KVM as one more alternative, um, or at least that was an alternative. So there used to be a very good option to pay attention to, which was called um, Red Hat or Heavy Plus Offered. Unfortunately, Red Hat ditched it in favor of open shared solutions. And now Overt is uh, completely community driven. So it is not getting updates very often anymore and is dropped in terms of commits of this project. So if, he, if I were you, uh, personally, I would not consider this as an option which needs viable attention um, because simply you can't get commercial support for it. Um, that's it. And what's left? So there are some other enterprise Linux options such as Oracle. Um, so some of you are also um, noticing that Nutanix can be an option. Um, Nutanix one is a bit different question. So uh, they are more kind of aiming at enterprise markets, um, so they do, do require several nodes as a minimal configuration, like, and yeah, so something like that. But actually, let's focus on the Proxmox, uh, the solution that I think is worth paying attention to as an alternative to VMware. Who is the Proxmox actually? So. In general, Proxmox is an open source platform that simply provides a suite of tools for managing virtualized server environments. Um, so it was released a long time ago in 2008 uh, in Austria and simply matured throughout the years. And there is a Proxmox virtual environment, which is simply a server virtualization platform, uh, the hypervisor that integrates simply KVM functionality, and also Linux containers offering web-based interface for managing virtual machines, uh, also container storage networking. And it was simply designed for enterprise virtualization and also allows for um, creation and management of virtual servers for uh, some data centers providing high availability clustering uh, with ease. And it also features native backup solution, which is Proxmox backup server. Uh, and also it is quite well known among whole labbers featuring all-in-one architecture. Important thing is that Proxmox is really an enterprise grade solution. So I personally recommend considering that for, for the production environments for the enterprise. But yeah, so that that's how, how the things are going. Uh, for, for my personal opinion, uh, it's pretty looking, especially for an open source product. Yeah, so there are some other good examples of a um, good user interface, but this one is not only good, but useful. But if you're, for example, if you're a VMware customer, of course, you will experience some kind of jet lag switching to it. So this is what you can expect. So it obviously is not as developed as VMware. And obviously you can just compare the size of the uh, VMware and Proxmox team, but if you will get with it, with the Proxmox, um, you will find it pretty useful and not bad at all in general. Yeah, something like that. In terms of the support of the solution, um, I see one of the questions, uh, how do we consider Proxmox as an enterprise grade solution when support is only provided by Proxmox uh, during Austrian business hours. So one of the options will be here is uh, having MSP assigned to supporting this solution. So definitely um, if you're, for example, in different time zone, you can use one of your local MSPs that are able to support the Proxmox hypervisor, and that will be the better option. Um, and uh, looking forward also, um, 
Starwind, when we're talking about Starwind hardware products, we will also be able to support and at least advise on any Proxmox um, issues or something like that um, when, when you're simply purchasing Proxmox and solution uh, with Starwind hardware as well. So yeah, these are the options.